Hello my YouTube fam, my name is Ange and welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is doing okay in this season, crazy season, so much happening. But I am here today to try and just share some facts as well as just to encourage us, especially people of color like myself, to be ones that just tackle initiatives because we're in a season where we can truly rise economically and really start commanding and um, and start really taking matters into our own hands when it comes to our economic power. So here we go. Um, a few years ago, I was the first person that ran the very first word uh, award um, ceremony in a DRC for the mining industry. And in the mining industry back home in the Congo, to be precise, many of you may already know that the Congo is one of the richest when it comes to minerals, when it comes to resources. Um, I did the first one, the first award ceremony, and it was amazing. It was amazing in many ways because it was, it was a very prestigious event with hundreds of people, the CEOs of some of the main mining companies. Uh, we're talking about Tenke Fungurume, MMG, and the list just goes on and on and on, right? And um, these are billion dollars worth businesses. They drive crazy revenues each and every single month, right? But here is something that really bothered me about what I what the award ceremony because I had to work very closely to the CEOs and owners and executives of these organizations. Um, it wasn't really a surprise, I suppose, that um, every single one of those companies were not really run by local Congolese people, local African people, not even just Africans, you know? <laughs> so, and I was thinking to myself, it's amazing how powerful we are, but at the same time, we are powerless. And I start probing and just think, you know, researching and going on about why is it that we are not running our own economy? Why is it that we are not running our own resources? And obviously the answers are clear. Some may deny it, but the realities are that our resources are driving the Western society. That's why their infrastructures are strong. That's why their economies are strong. But I think we've got to start thinking now that we are a little bit more awake and start thinking about how do we take it in our own hands to make our own economy strong, to make our own communities uh, sustainable. Because we've been losing a lot of resourceful people, intelligent people uh, to the West. Because since the West is the one that is sucking all those resources, building on those resources, and therefore it makes actually sense that a lot of our own people a lot of our manpower has gone over to the West because they have to survive. They have to be self-sustainable. They have to look after their families and so on and so forth. Yes, but we've got to change things now because we are in a season where doors are wide open. They are wide open, number one, because we are more awake. They are wide open because um, we are understanding our own power, right? One of the things that we understand is our identity. As Africans on the African continent, we now understand that identity is power, right? Identity is power. Uh, one of the big elements of understanding your identity is to understand your roots, where you're from. But also, and also on top of that, to understand where you're from, what is there? There is always a reason why you are born where you're born. And even more so, where you are born and where you grow up, there are things there that you could do with what has been given to you as your own talents, your own gifts to empower your communities, to empower you, to empower your family, particularly economically, because at the end of the day, when you are economically sound, not only are you looking after yourself, 
but you're able to look after those around you on your streets in your area in your city and more and more so identity is an issue that's what I really want to zero in on today right I'm asking us a question should we as Africans or as people of color look at the idea of rewriting our history I think we really need to think about that should we rewrite our history yes obviously that means a lot of research going back in time getting reliable source of history because a lot of people are lost because they do not know who they are right it's easy enough for those that know who they are those that also understand what they have for them to go far in life to go to have some kind of progress in life right but when we don't know there is more likely at some point that we're gonna encounter certain issues because identity crisis is a huge issue identity crisis lead us into all kinds of mental sicknesses it leads us into places of uncertainties places where um, you find yourself in a place where you could actually be strong and have an impact but because you do not know who you are you don't actually know where to begin so I'm saying to us now should we consider should we start talking about rewriting history I was reading an article on the BBC about this African journalist who was sent back in Africa to look at this entire issue of are Africans being taught their real history yes of course we are taught history but what kind of history right um, your history can make you or break you right look at how many people who do not know who their parents are where they end up not everybody of course and it's not it's not that when you do not know then it's 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 necessarily a must that you're gonna have an issue many people overcome it yeah okay we can overcome these things but just think about how many people who do not know just simple cases of individual not knowing who their father is or their mother is the kind of trauma mental issue emotional issue that brings on right even though we're not talking on an individual basis now we're talking about Africa we're talking about people of color in general but all of this together over the years accumulates and creates certain issues of stability in our lives, communities, uh, countries, and so on. If we have to consider the idea of rewriting our history, it is so important that we really start, first of all, examining what we have, what we have been taught. For example, just for myself and those that have looked around, I've done a little bit of research in my own communities just to find out as Africans or as just a black person, what history did you learn? Maybe we could all start there. What history did we learn? And the second question is that, is that related to us? I'm not saying learning other people's history is not important, it's important it's important to read and to learn about history all over the world but how much of that history is your history where is the roots how is it related to you I know for a fact that it brings me a lot of comfort as a person to know not only who my parents are their parents and the parents of the parents the names of villages and towns where they're from who they were what they were doing what their traditions were and what they believed in what was their faith what was their lifestyle like on a daily basis um, those things they give me some kind of comfort and stability and they build me and I have a feel like I have a certain foundation that I can build on without me first worrying about who I am and I understand that a lot of our fellow people 
for example, our fellow African Americans, they struggled a lot because unfortunately they were ripped away from their homes and therefore a lot struggled to figure out where they're from. A lot of the things, the issues we see in the communities that are serious issues of whether it's mental issues, drugs and so on and so forth, it goes back to that. Because a lot of psychologists and counselors with their clients or patients have said the same thing. They've said, a lot of my clients, these issues are always rooted back to their identity. Identity crisis. Where they're from, they struggle to figure out who they are because they do not know where they're from or do they, do they, not, they do not know who their father or mother is and the list goes on and on and on. It's all related to who they are, where they're from. A lot of the issues that we're having now, if we can only start dealing with who we are first, identify who we are, where we're from, our cultures, our faith, our, our you know, what, what, we, what roots do we really have? If we can find that, it will help us to understand where we could go, what we could build on, right? But most importantly, the economic issues that we're having in a community is rooted there. It's definitely rooted there. I was reading about the article I was saying earlier on a BBC uh, that they did earlier. Uh, they sent an African journalist back to Africa to do some research on history. And uh, he found out a lot of things, but at the same time, he struggled to find a lot of real things because he found that a lot of our history is based on European history. Our curriculums at schools are all about history of Europe, history of America, and so on. He asked his own parents about it, about his own real history, and the parents struggled to tell him who, where he really came from. Uh, they could tell him about the history of Henry VIII and uh, uh, all those kind of people, but they could not tell him about himself, where he's from or where they're from, except they could maybe trace it back to the grandparents. But apart from that, that is it. That is it. I think we need to look at, can we rewrite our history as Africans or as people of color? My question also that follows that is, the, how much of the history that we have learned is valuable to us? And the follow-up question is, why? Why, if the history that we're learning now is not directly related to us, doesn't give us a sense of identity, why is it? Why is it that it was told to us that way? Why was it changed to look the way that it looks now? Why should an African person be able to tell you about the history of Europe, but unable to trace back to his own history. I think these are questions that we need to look at. I am saying to us that let's do a little bit of homework. Let's really think about these questions. Let's put some notes down and really start discussions about this. Maybe this will lead to a place in some, sometime in the future where we could be learning what really is related to us and our roots. And when we start there, there's a reason why I'm starting there. Because when you start there, you figure out your identity, your real roots. We can then start building on that. I'm going that far back because as much as the award ceremony of the mining industry disturbed me a little bit, as much as that disturbed me, at the end of the day, um, we were built on only believing that certain communities are capable of running certain things so therefore it's ruled by certain types of people and our own people in our own land have been found un incapable of leading certain things which is very unusual and i certainly do not believe in that we have capable people we are beautiful people we are smart people we are educated people, we are sensitive people, we are powerful people. At the end of the day, before any form of colonization, we were running the show. And at those times, 
we didn't have half of the challenges, half of the economic challenges that we are currently having. So we must have been doing some things wrong. We were not perfect, but we must have been doing we 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 must have been doing some things right rather. Let me correct that statement. We must have been doing something right. Right? So with that thought, if we were found as a people that were able to run our own economy in our own way, even though he may have been seen as savage ways, we had a lot less issues that are in the system right now based on Western society. So my people, let's, let's look at this. I'm leaving you with a question again. Should we, as a people of color, as African people, rewrite our history? Until next time, to follow up on this topic, take care.